Hello, welcome to part 27 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ. Here, we are going to discuss day-to-day -day clinical scenarios with detailed explanation. Let's move to our question number 131. A female runner sustained a stress fracture involving the inferior aspect of the left femoral neck. A treatment regimen including protection with the use of crutches is prescribed. The physician orders non-weight-bearing ambulation until the relief of pain at the rest is achieved. A physical therapist instructs the patient to walk with crutches using which of the following gates? Option A, 4-point crutch gate. Option B, 3-point crutch gate. Option C, 2-point crutch gate. Option D, swing to crutch gate. And the answer is Option B, 3-point crutch gate. Explanation to this question is 3-point crutch gate is recommended to patients who are instructed not to bear weight on one leg. Patients with fractures, pain, and amputation involving one of the lower extremity are thought to first move the crutches and the affected leg forward and then bear weight down through the pair of crutches. The strong leg moves forward next. Option A and Z are recommended to patients with weakness in both legs. The 2-point crutches gait is faster than the 4-point crutch gait. Option D is also recommended to patients with weakness of to both the lower extremities. This pattern necessitates good upper extremity strength. Now let's move to question number 132. The therapist is working in outpatient cardiac rehabilitation facility. A 50-year-old healthy man inquires about the current expense parameters for increasing aerobic efficiency. Which of the following is the most correct information to convey to this individual? Option A. Exceeds at 50 to 85 percentage of maximum volume of oxygen utilization. Option B. Exceeds with heart rate between 111 and 153 beats per minute. Option C. Exceeds are approximately 170 beats per minute. Option D. A and B are correct. And the answer is. Option D, A and B are correct. Explanation to this question is, Choice A and B are correct exercise parameters for healthy person. Choice B has patient exercising at 65% to 90% of the age adjusted maximal heart rate. Choice C is patient age adjusted maximal heart rate. Now let's move to question number 133. A patient sustained a gunshot wound at the spine in the area of L1. The patient has weakness of the left lower extremity and inability to move knee, ankle or foot. The patient's patella tendon eyelash tendon reflex are increased on the left side. There is also a loss of proprioception in patient's left ankle and knee. A positive Wapinski sign on the left side and diminished sensation of pinprick and temperature changes in the right thigh, leg and the foot. Results of all of the patient's cranial nerve tests are normal. These findings are consistent with which of the following injuries? Option A. Complete severance of the spinal cord. Option B. Injury to the left and rear horn of the spinal cord. Option C. Injury to the left side of the spinal cord. Option D. Injury to the central area of the spinal cord. And answer is Option C. Injury to the left side of the spinal cord. Explanation to this question is Complete severance of the spinal cord cause motor and sensory loss of both sides of the body. A lesion of the anterior horn cells causes a lower motor neuron problem and hyporeflexia. The signs or symptoms are present in question point to the hemisession of the spinal cord on the left side, which gives rise to the ipsilateral motor and proprioception loss and contralateral loss of the pain and the temperature. Also, the presence of hyperreflexia and positive Papinski sign on the left side. A lesion of the central spinal cord usually spares the motor tract. Now let's move to push number 134. The therapist received an order to treat a 42-year-old man admitted to the hospital three days ago with a swab would beep the left lower thoracic spine. The patient is unable to move the left lower extremity and cannot feel pain or temperature difference in the right lower extremity. What is the most likely type of lesion? Option A. Anterior core syndrome. Option B. Brown core syndrome. Option C. Central core syndrome. Option D. The patient is equally as likely to have anterior core syndrome as he is 
have brown squat syndrome and answer is option b brown squat syndrome explanation to this question is the question describes the hemisession of the spinal cord which is classified as brown squats lesion anterior spinal cord injury present with loss of motor function and insensitivity to pain and temperature bilaterally central cord injury are characterized by the loss of function in the upper extremity and normal function in the trunk and the lower extremity now let's move to question number 135 A physical therapist notes that the patients have patches of dry erythematous skin over the extensor surface of the elbow and the knee as well as bony enlargement of the distal interphalangeal joints. These findings are most associated with which of the following diagnoses? Option A, Rater syndrome. Option B, psoriatic arthritis. Option C, rheumatoid arthritis. Option D, systemic lupus erythematosus. And the answer is Option B psoriatic arthritis Explanation to this question is skin lesion described in the stem are the characteristic of psoriasis Psoriatic arthritis occurs in about 1/3 of the persons with psoriasis When the psoriatic arthritis is present the distal interphalangeal joints are commonly affected the skin lesion described in the stem and the involvement of distal interphalangeal joints are not classic of the other three diagnoses So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment box. For further learning, keep in touch with the channel. See you in the next part. Bye bye. See you.